Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining me. I'm um, just waiting for uh, XP to load the Zebo now. As you saw, I loaded my uh, Trusted 172 just to get XP to settle, and then we're going to get going in the Zebo. First things first, let's get connected to our ground power unit. Get some battery going, get the power unit on the bus and start setting up the lighting.
Uh, good morning, Andile. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to doing the stream again. It's been uh, a while since I've been on YouTube, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. That takes care of our loading. I just need to quickly set up uh, the flight plan in Active Sky so we can actually use the voice meters. We're going to be flying at flight level uh, 320 today and that's recommended by the Witchell Airlines so we're sticking to that and now John this is for you are you there buddy? Alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move us to the live rooms hold on So at least the, the people can see when you and I are talking to each other and also hear us. Um, Alright, so to get the Q&H, what we are going to do is we're going to listen to it. This is from Active Sky XP. Uh, one, two, two, zero, zero. That was too far. Lima Echo Mike Delta Airport Information Lima zero seven three zero Zulu Weather Wind three three one at three visibility one zero thousand sky clear temperature minus one dew point minus two Q and H one zero two one advice on initial contact you have information Lima Lima Echo Mike Delta Airport Information Right, so you listen to the Q&H there, it's 1021. Um, in uh, Active Sky, we can actually just hover our little mouse over the airport and it will also tell us all the details that we were just listening to. And if you are using NOAA, then you can use the widget to call the weather or for those of you that are using other weather engines you can actually use the ACARS button on the FMC there's ACARS and then you can request your uh, airport information uh, L E M D I'm going to show you how it works but it's not probably not going to give us an answer the reason is Zebo is not currently reading the METAR file provided by Active Sky for Explain. So this facility is not going to help for anybody using Active Sky for Explain. But if you're using NOAA or some other web, uh, uh, sorry, not web, some other weather uh, program, this will work. And the other place where you can get your Q and H from is obviously from the uh, AVI tab and you can go to airport and you can uh, go LEMD and simply search it uh, you see because again we are using active sky for experiences no weather information available uh, the other weather engines that uh, is populating the the default uh, explain where the file will obviously give you your readings over here as well and all you need to do once you have that is just simply uh, dial it in with this little dialer at the top make sure that it reflects properly at the bottom there and there you go that's your that's the basics to get going in terms of the um, uh, Q&H setting your initial ultimate setting if you're in the US using FAA and not uh, ICAO or CAA standards so 
That's where that is. Do, does that help you a little bit already, John? Spot on. All right, and then what will happen is as and then and then a transition a transition you you select standard. Uh, yes, after the transition altitude, we'll get to that as we set up the planning. I'll show you the charts and then we can talk through that again. Good morning, Felix. How are you, buddy? Nice to see you on stream here. Yeah. Right, so okay. one, one of the things that I've noticed here is that our uh, windows are fogging up very nicely. As far as I know, our temperature currently is like minus one. Uh, yeah, showing minus zero in sim. Um, so that's the reason for the fogging up. We'll clear that just uh, in a short while. So before we get going too far, let's actually look at this. Um, John, let me show you something else. If you go to your plugins folder and you go to your AVI tab and you toggle the tablet, this is the original one that's on screen now. What you need to do is to, to link your Navigraph. Uh, just a quick tutorial. You click on Navigraph over there um, and then you will have a different button obviously I think it says link account you click on that it opens your browser you put in your username and your password for the Navigraph account tick the checkbox to remember the decision and click OK or allow or something like that and uh, you can then uh, close this facility come to your AVI tab over here and it will obviously then give you the necessary details so once you let me actually just get my head around this thing and zoom in a little bit more. So in, in order to start using this facility, stop mouse, you click on those little lines over there. And this now links up with Navigraph. So we can now go to the airport and we can actually find our charts. Um, one thing that's very important on uh, Barajas uh, airport is you need to know which runways to use uh, you can't just use any runway and think uh, you know that it's it's sufficient there are rules so let me quickly read through that with you our peri preferential configuration at this point in time for departures is going to be 36 left or right okay according to our winds we are looking at at that configuration so you can't take off from the other runways it's not allowable obviously in some you can do that nobody says you can't uh, practically you can do it but legally if it was the real world or if, if you are flying online with one of the networks they're going to hammer you if you try and do uh, you know silly things like that so we're going to take runway 36 left coming back to our charts we're looking for the airport one. Right, so that's the airport one. We're going back to there. And then we're going to look at the taxi routes. Very importantly, we need to know how to taxi to get there. That runway where the mouse is at now, that's 36 left. We are currently there, somewhere there. I'm not sure why it's not connecting to the sim and not showing us. Oh, there we go. There we at. You see, we are there. So if we look at our taxi routes from there, we need to travel all the way up, not interfere with runway operations, probably go around that way and then somewhere there, find our way to get over there. Alright, so that's going to be a bit of a mission. Now, in order for us to simplify things and in sim, we obviously have some nice tools. So let's see if the tool will actually work today. This is a flight factor uh, product. It's called Airport VS. So what I'm going to try to do is set up like a GPS, you know, um, system to get to where we want to be. So we... I'm going to taxi next to the runway. So I'm going to go there. I are, oh, hang on. It will not click if the, the tablet is in the background. Okay, before we do that, let's just quickly see how far we can go. Yeah. 
Alright, so we're going there. And we're going over there. Hey Felix, thanks for the six bucks. Uh, much appreciated, buddy. Awesome. And then we're going to travel. Nope, that's not what we want. Let's undo that one. Go there. Why are you taking us there? Go there. Let's zoom in a little bit. What happened? Oh, you know what? I forgot to set my uh, hydraulics. That was very clever of me. All right. So once this is done, we can say accept. And now we actually have a path that we can follow. And this works like your GPS in your car. So we're literally just going to follow the magenta line to get to where we want to be. Now the prerequisite for this little program to work is you need ground routes active on your airport. If the ground routes are not active, this is not going to help you because there's nothing to you know connect the dots with so we're going to keep this one then in the back of our minds we can close it for now in fact let's just go back. i have this plugin yeah it's a it's a nice one when it works eh? when you've got the ground roots so this is my mistake i was supposed to set up those uh electrical hydraulics to prevent uh the ground services from thinking that the um, parking brake is not set so I'm just going to try cycle through the works here and see if we can get them back mm, ground remove jock set jocks disconnect and reconnect uh, usually something like this work let's go ground handling control drive up all there we go so now we've cycled through the problem and usually if you set those hydraulics they will now stay in place all right, so what is the next door? Let's go back to our airports. We've now got the airport, the taxi routes. We now need a SID. Let's go grab a SID. Let's make life a little bit easier for us. Uh, we're looking for a departure and we are looking for the Romeo Bravo Oscar 1 November. 1 Romeo, no, we're going north. 1 November. I think that's the one. That is indeed our standard instrument departure. Right, so we can then get rid of LEMD and then we can go look for our destination. We are going to LF, what did we say? LFOB. Alright, let's grab our Navigraph. And we are looking for Papa Echo X-Ray India 9 Bravo Arrival. How can we pronounce that? The Pex, Pexi 9 Bravo. Let's see if we can find that. Oops, wrong one. No. That should be the one. Okay, this chart at this point in time is still one of the old ones. It doesn't support the flight following on the aircraft, so we won't see ourselves fly there, which is a bummer, but they also need time to upgrade all the. Uh, little charts so we'll forgive them right the approach will be uh, 
where's my other charts what did i plan on this well this is going to be similar to the one we do at manchester where we're going to actually come over the airport uh, and use the VOR approach to get on the, to the ILS. So which one are we looking at? ILS Z. I think that should be the one. Uh, not entirely. Why not? Must be, man. Must be. That's interesting. It looks um, slightly different on screen as it actually does in the Navigraph charts on the side. Interesting. Uh, it still gives us the same information, so we're not going to go crazy about it. Right, then the next thing we want is we want the runway. Uh, not the runway, the airport. All right, briefing. That should be the airport. All right, okay. So what I've done now is I've set up the tablet to have all the little uh, Navigraph charts uh, slash Jeppesen charts in there. For us, I've also got it on my third monitor. So we're going to see which ones we use as we continue. All right, then going back to the home let's start loading see if these other guys are still there yes let them work okay so we are at LEMD Felix, um, I leave the uh, tick in the box. I've never bothered to, to take them off. My understanding of the experimental flight model is that if the aircraft ACF file flags that it's got an experimental flight model, explain will use it if that flag is not set in the acf file it will not use it so i think the intelligence is enough inside of explain 11 to actually know when to and when not to use it i mean if it if it goes and looks for an experimental flight model that doesn't exist it's just going to skip it and fall back uh to to the default that that's my understanding and i must say i haven't had any issues doing it that way um but that's a good question next time i speak to twixter i'll ask him i mean he wrote the thing so uh we'll ask him Runway 36 left, and we are doing a Ryanair. Where is that thing? 29X Ray Victor. X Ray Victor. Alright, so the departure, just to refresh my memory, get on the right page. Uh, show you guys what I'm looking at. Uh, we we all forget to turn things on and off. It's like me starting the Zebo and then forgetting to move to a new location and then I get all the errors and I go, oh, you stupid idiot, I was supposed to remember. That's why I'm even forcing myself to load up in the Charlie 172 now so that I don't make that mistake. You know, it's crazy. Uh, but even I forget. We're all human. This is going to be the determining factor. We need to see. Oh, 
what we supposed to use here? Hmm. I'm not going to know that way, so let's go have a look. Number five. Step through. See which one will suit us best. actually not a bad first option because it's taking us right around and then turning back which is perfect I'm not gonna bother with the other one let's just step the last bit That's perfect, perfect, I'm happy. That's going to be interesting. Um, let's uh, continue with our setup. Felix, I got this off the org a day or two ago and um, it looks quite interesting. This is my first time I'm going to fly in there. I hope we're talking about the same scenery, but it looks kind of nice, yeah? Um, I'm not sure if there is a payware version, but this one's free. Got it off the org. We're using a cost index of 6 because this is a Ryanair and 320 because we're going to travel up north now ah sorry wrong button there you go Must be then, yeah, must be the same scenery. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, uh, outside temperature is minus one, so let's just double check that's fine. Our performance data suggests that we need to do Come on, click somewhere else now, man. Uh, take off. And I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to use a little bit more power there. In actual fact, why? Why must I? Hmm. We can leave it at that, but I'm definitely going to climb faster. I'm not going to waste my time idling up there. We'll rather have a good long cruise. see the effect oh, it's bringing us down yeah that looks that looks acceptable to me all right flaps five on now um, pretty soon we're going to have to need to see out the window so let's get that going and then let's look at the next uh, 488 on the trim we're going to rise it uh, raise it slightly because we're a bit heavy I'm uh, running full packs uh, Ryanair would have done in the 170 something passengers the Zebo can only take 164 so it's like full packs with a little bit of cargo and 
so we're going to just lift that trim slightly um, V2 is 147 and then if we look at our tarts well we've got them here Zero zero one. Okay. And the flight level is three two zero. Hello David, good morning. And that takes care of our flight configuration for us. That cleans up a little bit on that side and let's get going to the next stage. Your damper on and we're going to start one of our uh, Felix. Yeah, um, I have not tried it. Uh, I am, I'm quite happy with what I have right now. I'm just using the default shaders and FS enhancer. I don't see why I need to change FS enhancer now. I'll, I'm rather more excited about FS enhancer 0.6. You know, when Enrico finishes that, I'd like to see what that looks like. Um, Shaders obviously is a problem in 11.30 So I don't want to mess with too many things Manipulating shaders because I've already seen my backside uh, With reshade obviously, you know, and uh, uh, So I'm just keeping it simple Right, let's get our APU going Indeed, yeah, the integration is very nice. It works for me. And being a creature of habit and also a loyal person, you know, to some of the suppliers, I, I don't jump around too much. I'll play with it, you know, see what it does for me and then make up my mind. But I'm happy where I'm at right now. Alright, APU on, disconnect our GPU. Good morning Javier, thank you for joining us again, eh? Welcome. Right, so APU is on. We can check our cabin and in flight entertainment. Uh, equipment cooling, that's fine. Uh, arm the emergency exits and no smoking and fasten seat belts. Windows we have done, we have checked our volts and amps on the uh, APU, everything looks fine, hydraulics all in place for ground crew and then packs on, isolation valve on. Right, one thing I have not done is set up my beta pushback.
Right, start our flight leg. Just checking all the doors, making sure the guys disconnect and start moving away. I presume our law enforcement officer is already on board. I forgot to set up my uh, little information bar at the top there guys just bear with me one minute let me get all the details in there sorry about that I just realized I never did that And that should do it. Right, I've double checked my VA client is on, so I'll get my scoring for the virtual airline as well. And let's call the better push back. Round complete. Tau is driving up. We have very little fuel in that center uh, fuel tank, but as is the custom, we're going to enable the fuel pump so that it will use that first and then move over to the wings. Let us get the rest going. Uh, backs need to go off. Come on. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Right, beacon goes on. We're going to look for Hello, our bots and bombs. Right mode. If the other base does not have airplane off flight mode, it needs to be switched off now. Please remain seated until you are clear to fly. Thank you. 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 Everything is fine, let's get going. Starting pushback, and you may start in here. Uh, Javier, yeah, uh, Felix is correct. It's all included in the uh, version 3.32 full. 
uh, you need to download that as your basis for the Zebo, uh, the foundation of the uh, aircraft, and then you start adding uh, the Bravo, Charlie, and Delta in sequence, all those fixes, and then you should be fine. But you need to get the 3.32 full version installed right in the beginning. That goes in first. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Brake set. And the flight controls check out nicely. Yeah, that's three. That's three. Flaps five. Then we're looking for the green light and the pin from our good buddy. Yeah. Eh? Control is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hansing now on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for your help. We'll check you later. Right, flaps five, green light. So we're happy. We're waiting for the pin, then we'll start the taxi. Yeah, it looks kind of clear this morning. Let's have a look at the weather quickly while we are talking about that. Where is my weather app? That is our weather for today. Starting at Madrid, there is a little bit of rain on the way, but that's obviously going to be below us. And the airport is just above Paris over there, so I don't see any... Uh, I don't see any rain uh, you know, coming coming our way unless it moves faster you know than what we anticipate then we might get some because I see those winds uh, are blowing it in our direction uh, yeah how do I give you permission let's have a look see uh, that is windy.com. Uh, you are right, but for some reason now the bot is preventing you from pasting windy.com. Sorry, John. Uh, I'll have to check those settings, but you're right. It's windy.com. Right, so the transponder goes on because this airport very definitely uh, caters for uh, ground radar and we don't want to upset anybody so we switching it on already and then we grab our little come on right now it's on top of the tablet again and it won't help us so let's move it away from that tablet get our little gps going there oh this thing is so big Okay, hang on, 
Let's do this. Take that one away. And just use this one for now because this will tell us where to go to. And then we'll re-enable the other one later. Yeah, we'll see when we get there. Um, let's also just get our timer going. John, let me get my hands free, or if Felix, if you can maybe help. Oh, you know what? It's not going to allow the links. Let let me go switch that thing off. Uh, mod tools. Okay, link protection is off, guys. Try posting the link, uh, Felix, if you can. Otherwise, John, just give me a moment so I can get my hands free, and then we can uh, post it for you. Oh, I'm turning too shallow. I've just noticed that it seems that apart from the uh, chatbot, uh, even YouTube is blocking the links. I don't know, there must be a link somewhere. I'll have to try and figure this one out because it also still wants me to approve or, or allow or disallow the links. So I might be fighting against two systems it seems. We'll figure it out. I uh, know I made my own also for this area. Uh, Javier, I had Spain, um, the Spain UHD uh, stuff, but because I'm using Ortho 1.3 now, uh, I actually get the uh, follow runway terrain contours, uh, which you don't get with the Spain UHD. I'm not sure if you can actually pick it up, but I've gone through a, a dip or two already in the taxiway here. So the whole airport is following uh, terrain contours with uh, the new version of Ortho.
This is kind of a bit of a way to taxi, eh? This is a huge airport. Approach at one, four, right. Don't worry, we're not going there, lady. Alright, looks like I'm taking the right turn now. Third one. Next one, next one, next one. Here we go. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Thank you. Buckle up, get ready, we're going. Good morning Sentinel, hope you're well, thanks for joining us on stream, I'm about to take off in uh, Madrid now. Approaching three six left. On runway three six left. And there we go. One day. There we go. So we can neutralize our gears. RTO off and then ride out this departure. I'm glad you guys like the hangar. I just thought one day, you know what? I might as well give a little oh, bit yes. more. You know, some of the stuff that I use, I'm pretty sure you guys can use as well. So there you go. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it. It's good to have you, Sentinel. Good to have you here. I actually sabotaged 
uh, my own stream a little bit. Um, JD was streaming the Zebo uh, 737 Max 8 this morning on his channel. In fact, he might still actually be doing that. So I dropped the link in uh, the Zebo community group and at one point in time we had 30 guys sitting there watching the stream with us uh, talking and, and so on. So I think a lot of my viewers might still be there. Ah, uh, John, these are my orthos, uh, my external stuff. Is that what you're referring to? So the transition altitude in this place is like mega high, um, it's 13,000 foot. <laughs> Felix, yeah, I, I found the same thing and ever since I got rid of the reshade, I mean, uh, I'm pushing 30s and up now, so I'm happy. The, the screen uh, is really on our side, the FPS is on our side now, good to hear that it looked for you. Oh yes, it definitely will. No, locking, locking it in if you can maintain it is nice. Um, yeah, I'm doing anywhere between 28 and 34 right now, but uh, more on the 30 side. So, yeah, fans. I-70s with all the fan noise and all the heat and everything else, um, I think it's a good call to lock it to a sensible value, John. My FPS is constant 30. No, that's good, that's good. But you've got a nice machine, man. I mean, you, you've got a dream machine. Just need a bit more hard, hard drive space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the orthos. <laughs> 12 terabytes, a bit low, isn't it? <laughs> Depends on who you speak to. <laughs>
Yeah, that's how I run it as well, John. It's just my operating system on the SSD. The mechanical hard drives are cheap. You get a lot of space. They work very well as long as you buy the correct ones running at 7200 RPM. Don't go for all these energy save green monsters and stuff that are trying to push down your throat. Then you're okay for speed, eh? and then you've got lots of space for cheap, cheap. Sentinel, um, Pablo is dead, so my argument here is we're talking about Maria Elena or one of the daughters. Um, so being, a, I, I don't know if this is going to be uh, politically correct to say this, but I can imagine that one of those ladies must be a fussy eater and that's why you want a special meal for her and all. Um, I think everybody obviously makes a nice joke of it um, and we'll never know. I haven't asked uh, one of the team members what they were alluding to but I think it's just a joke anyway so uh, my take on it is just that I think it's it's one of the ladies, it's one of the daughters or the wife um, you know that they're talking about anything's possible Sentinel I come from a world where anything is possible. I will not be surprised if they send him home. Uh, Felix, I'll have to set a reminder because I'm not tuned into the Six Nations at all. Uh, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, many, many, many years ago I worked for the South African Air Force. Uh, and there's a story about that too, but I don't want to go into details about that. And, and one of the things that we did was we tried to rebuild a Spitfire. And you can actually go Google it. The thing flew eventually. Um, I bugged out of uh, the project very early on like two or three days into it because I actually met a very sweet young lady and we started dating and I didn't want to go spend my Saturdays at Swartkops Air Force Base rebuilding this aircraft so I bugged out and I started dating this lady we eventually got married and have two kids now and I mean we've been together 25 years now and one of the casualties uh, of the whole process of dating and falling in love and all these things was sports. So I haven't, yeah, yeah, sure, but I haven't watched the sports for many years uh, because my time was spent with my girlfriend to become my wife and then the kids. Um, if you, if you were on stream a while ago I also said I actually gave up my whole flying career and the whole flying dream at that point in time to start my family 
you know so sports is like way in the back of my mind and now lately with politics interfering in sports I've lost total interest to be quite honest um, if I happen to walk past the TV and there's a Springbok rugby game I'll quickly you know, watch a little bit um, but it's not a priority for me I, I've moved beyond sports really um, my father and my brother on the other hand they are the guys you are talking about they will kill to watch um, a good rugby match or something um, yeah Renee she's, she's a lovely lady so yeah my life changed literally after meeting her lots and lots and lots so yeah I tell you what I like more than rugby or even cricket is actually having a nice South African braai. I mean, you guys don't probably know what that is, but uh, it's it's our form of barbecue. But we do it big. I mean, we go for the steaks and the stuff, you know. Um, yeah, Linda. Linda is now second in line, eh? Um, I, I think I told you guys the story already. My wife actually calls my simulator the other woman. And when Linda appeared, it was just the other woman personified now, you know, in physical form, so to speak. Uh, so between the flight simulator, the family, the work and the, the braai place, our barbecues, I mean, that's what I do. Very true, Santinel, everything happens for a reason, I also believe that. Let's have a look outside. Let's do a bit of an orbit. Sentinel, you won't believe it, I haven't flown with her. Um, I actually became a member of the Jar Design Beta Test Steam to test out uh, Sandy, which is the male equivalent of Linda. And uh, I've been flying the A320 lots and lots and lots uh, because he fits into the A320 where Linda actually now does the A330. So I haven't actually flown uh, with Linda again since her horrible... Uh, medical condition happened um, little Sandy has gone through a couple of updates and he's okay -ish now I must actually take him for a spin later and see if the latest update fixed some of his issues but uh, you know being a work in progress and, and still being in, in beta form I want to tell you I, I love those two add-ons that AI uh, and animation add-on that the guys have brought into jar design is actually stunning it's amazing eh? thanks Felix that's a nice compliment Thank you, John. Appreciate that too. It's nice to say.
Um, almost, almost, guys. Hold on. Uh, Javier, I'm busy using Google Translate to get to your question. Um, I've picked up on it now. I'll give you the answer in a second. Give me a second. Okay, so that is the computer specs that I am using, um, but do me a favor, just below the video, just below, in, in YouTube, in the comment section, uh, or in the description section actually, where you get the rest of, you know, the presentation that I'm giving you, there's a link to my private hangar, click on that link. You will find my add-ons in there, the whole list, everything that I'm using, hardware, software, everything is in there. So don't be shy. Go into that link and go find all the information that you're looking for. Sorry, I clicked my um, caps lock there. Check my graphic settings. This is what I use. All right. Um, one of the things I can recommend from experience is don't use reflection detail. If you use reflection detail, you're going to get a problem. This needs to be off. Uh, I'm going to post you guys a little bit more, but what I've done is I've switched off the anti-aliasing, as you can see in the sim, I've switched it off completely. And then I'm going to drop you what I did in a second. Just give me give me a moment to get that quickly.
okay this is what I've done go into my private hanger that link below the video go into there when you go in there I have placed a text file called NVIDIA settings it's in there go find that file and then you combine it with my display settings let me actually put that in there for you as well so let's quickly take a screenshot Alright, so I need to go find that file quickly and dump it in there for you as well. Then you've got everything that I have done and then you can see what I've done. Right. great stuff okay so so guys in I hope um, my Mac I hope you understand my English just go to the hanger link my private hanger below the video and go grab my settings there I've got the screenshot in there I've got my Nvidia settings in there my PC specs uh, everything is in there so just have a look please let me know uh, if you struggle with the English Uh, Felix I don't change any priorities I run it as administrator and that's about it I don't give it any higher priorities at all on my system it works perfect the way it is Your captain speaking. We've just reached our cruise altitude and the signal sign is now off. Feel free to move around the cabin, but we do ask if you are in your seat that you do keep your seatbelt loosely fastened in case we do experience any unexpected turbulence. Otherwise, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Right, I hope Google Translate translated that okay from English to Spanish. Three hundred and thirty nautical miles until top of descent. 
Uh, Javier, yeah, I agree. Um, I sometimes go down to 24, um, but not much less than that now. My settings and my system seems to be stable. Uh, right now I'm getting 30 plus uh, frames per second. Uh, if we look around, you can see I've got quite a bit of cloud cover. So, it works. Guys, you must not be shy to ask questions. Um, please use this as a, a very nice opportunity to talk to me and get information. Um, nobody's going to laugh at you and anybody who laughs at you will uh, have to deal with me. So feel free guys, please uh, talk to me, ask your questions, give me some advice if you want to. I don't know, it's up to you, talk to me. Felix, yeah, that, that was a bummer. Um, I also didn't get it for $40, but I did get it. Uh, when I bought it, it was definitely not $40. Um, but dollars for me isn't something that excites me. Um, no. Being used to Zebo and the jar design, dollars is an empty shell. It, it needs a lot of work. Um, the systems might be good. But there's no immersion for me. There's, unless I fly a VA flight that requires a A319, I'm not even bothered to start it up because I get much more satisfaction from jar design than any of the other models. And um, so, so for me, dollars is like a loss. Um, I, I am pretty sure, let me just end with this now, I'm pretty sure that dollars is at the beginning of good things, great things. The fact that they are actively developing that aircraft excites me, that is definite. But um, for sure, it needs a nice so so sound pack, um, it needs a lot of TLC still. Um, when they're done with it, we'll see where they're at, but in terms of immersion, Nah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's an empty shell, really. Um, in my humble opinion, okay, let me stop with that now before I upset somebody. If you want to learn how an Airbus works, the Tolles is a great trainer. It's very forgiving and it sometimes feel like you're flying on rails, like you're not in a real aircraft. That fly-by-wire is like, for me in my humble flight simmer's opinion, not knowing how a real one works, is like you're flying on rails sometimes and it's a good trainer. You, you can learn a lot from it in the beginning. Um, but when you're looking for more immersion, that's not the model I would buy.
morning lady good morning sir John, yeah, they do. Um, they look better than the first version of um, the passengers, but they still need some tweaking. I think it was a very nice touch for Lubos to actually put them in here, but they need some work. At some point in time, someone will fix them. I actually don't know who made them, if it's Audio Bird or... I actually kind of wonder if it wasn't him who made these guys. But yeah, they, they're much better than the previous ones. Yeah, very true. Very true. Your exec uh, 737... I mean, we don't even hear anything about them. Uh, it's scary. I don't know why they don't talk to us. Uh, about a week or so ago they said that they are thinking or they are working on some update for 11.30 but I mean it's so few and far between any of the news snippets that we get from them it's it's worrying actually <laughs> John yeah triplets and doubles
Hi, good morning, goddies. Welcome. Okay, John, I see your message there. That's fine. Um, thanks for joining me. So, just say bye-bye when you go. But, yeah, thanks for joining me. It's nice to have you here, as always. Sentinel, um, what I can suggest is maybe just reboot your PC and restart X-Plane. If um, that does not help, uh, use something like X-Organizer. Disable all your plugins everything on page one then restart your explain if that doesn't work delete the zebo folder and do a fresh installation it might be that you missed something somewhere you need to have version 3.32 then uh, 3.32 a full that the the full package is your base and then you add uh, bravo charlie and delta in sequence and see if that fixes everything um i don't know I have not seen anything like that. Uh, I don't know what it could be. Did you change some of your settings in your um, tablet maybe? Change some of the graphic display settings or uh, in explain if you go to your view did you not enable sunglasses or one of these other fancy things uh, you know that explain gives us. Yeah send me a picture. Yeah, on messenger if you've got messenger send it on messenger or you or what you can do is 
uh, drop me a link to the picture if you've got some other picture program that you can link me to just drop me a link
Okay, I see 158 nautical miles to go, around about 100 nautical, so I'll start preparing for the landing. It's interesting, the map is stopped uh, downloading the tiles on certain zoom levels, so we'll just stick to zoom level 7. Alex, um, everything is in the hangar link below. If you go into my hangar link below the video in the description, uh, you will see that it takes you to a OneDrive with a, a folder structure. So if you go into my PC and some specs, there is a PDF that contains everything that I have or use um, I need to update it slightly there, there are updates required but that's the basics so you'll see what I have Felix, I don't know, it's kind of quiet from their side, I mean, I would love to to see some improvements, I also think that they stopped the development a little bit premature if they have stopped, so we'll see, I mean, the frame rates is definitely an issue uh, for a lot of people and not just me, uh, mine is semi-fixed like you know now, but I think they can do better. Yeah, it would be nice, but we must also be careful that they don't start mass producing or how do we explain this? I don't want them to also just release because they want to release or can release. It needs to be significant enough, you know. Um, the, the fixes would be nice if they fixed stuff sooner. That definitely they can improve. Uh, Matho, I'm I'm using X camera. Um, of all the camera systems that I know of, this is the nicest because I can just click on something and it happens, you know. Um, and there you can see some of my presets. You know, it's just nice to have it there. I've got some keyboard shortcuts set up as well. One of the nice things about the X camera system also is I can upload it to the community. So guys, if you are using X camera and you go look at the community files, you can actually search Skymatics as it's written there. And then you will see all my, my views are there and you can actually download and use that as well. It is also saved as the CSV file format that X camera uses. It's in, in this hangar of mine at the bottom. So 
you, you, either or you can download it either place um, Alex uh, what uh, do you mean Okay, okay, I'm sitting here talking and talking and I didn't realize that I'm muted on stream. Um, right, so what we, I don't, I don't know where you lost me, so let's let's start saying this. Uh, Alex, I'll go check out your stream later. Um, I'm going to see what uh, is spotting. Anybody here is welcome to go check your stream and then we can talk about the promotion later. Then in terms of Matho, your story is I'm not sure if there's a huge difference between the paid and the free X camera I've installed X camera for a few of my friends they have not complained and said that there's something they can do and something that they cannot do so I think the free version is good enough you can get it install it use one of my presets and then let me know if there's something that's not working but I'm not familiar with what the actual differences are and that is about all I think that I have said that you guys must uh, or might not have heard sorry about that I didn't realize the thing went on mute it's connected to my caps lock key so um, unfortunately when I press caps lock it actually mutes me
All right, so let's start looking at the preparation for the landing. Flaps 30 as always, and we get that into position. Let's get the charts on my other screen going quickly. Let's see what is our transition altitude in this place, 5000. Right, so to enable the transition altitude to work on our primary flight display we have to go to our descent forecast page and this is flight level 0 for 5000 feet and I'm just going to quickly grab the weather here where is that airport Right, I'm not going to worry about the winds at this point in time and we'll wait for the turn to finish so that we can actually have some stability in that uh, uh, little knob at the top Alex, we never know. Um, the idea, I think, is to just share the information. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that guys who are into flying might be into other games, and I'm pretty sure the other way around, we might pique somebody's interest. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Just drop a link to your channel in here. Let's see. Maybe the guys want to have a look. You know, so they're always good to share, I, was, I suppose. Right, so our minimums will be set to 240. Alright, 240 and we have a 550 meter runway visual minimum to keep in mind over there. And we're going to set up the Q&H as well. Before we forget. Uh, yes, please. If you can link me, yeah, that's fine, hundred percent. Right, so one zero nine decimal nine five on. The frequencies for nav 1 and nav 2 and the approach course 304. Wow, that's fast.
Okay, Sentinel, I'm looking at your picture. Um, talk to me. That looks semi-normal to me. Did you bring it down? Can you actually look at your HUD? I mean, if you look at that, does it look like mine? Uh, I upgraded mine. There's a little plugin that I loaded to change mine a little, little bit. But the purple seems quite fine. Just bring it down, have a look, see if it's, if it's still a problem or run the problem by me again so i just get into the picture sorry about that let's see
we are just commencing our descent. Looks like we'll be landing ahead of schedule and the weather conditions are looking good at our destination. We'll be touching down in less than 30 minutes, so do make your way back to your seats. Thanks for choosing the fly of us today and it's been a pleasure having you on board.
Right, so that recording was not uh, pulling our socks. It is uh, looking like uh, rather good weather there. Uh, temperature is 7, so slightly warmer than Madrid and looks fine to me. Possibility of a little bit of rain. Okay, drizzle. That's fine. Not a problem. We don't see much on the radar anyway. Okay, Felix, uh, thanks for sticking out so long and uh, being here with me. Thanks for the contribution. Uh, much appreciated and I hope you have a lovely day until we speak again. Bye-bye.
Uh, Matho, I'm actually using FS Enhancer Clouds. I did not install the uh, Active Sky uh, for X Plane Clouds at all. This is uh, FS Enhancer. I actually removed FS Enhancer at one point in time last week when I was fiddling with my frame rates because I was wondering if it's the Lua scripts that were basically creating the problem. Now you can use FS Enhancer without the Lua scripts but the clouds look funny, looks more like default so there's no point in that and then um, uh, yeah, yeah Lua it changes everything uh, if you know what you're doing and if you get the right scripts it's very nice and I mean this is all Lua script driven all these clouds that you see here without it it just looks like one piece of fluff you know like more default so after finding the culprit in the frames loss um, and removing that I just put FS Enhancer back in place and I'm happy it works very nicely This silly chart over here on the tablet uh, doesn't allow the flight following of the aircraft, so we might as well kill it. So it doesn't mean anything. Then we'll pick up the aircraft somewhere here again on, on this chart. I hope this one supports it. Um, what we're basically going to do is make our right turn there. We're going to fly right down the runway, right over the airport, and then bug out to the left, turning. Uh, right coming back onto the ILS. It's very similar to what we have at Manchester with that VOR approach and uh, It looks good on the Indy so I hope the Zebo follows it Otherwise, I will do my intervention and get us down safely I'll watch out for possibility of ice. Uh, I think when we go into the cloud layer, I might as well uh, switch on the anti-ice for the wings as well. But for now, we're on the engines and looking at the rest of the preparations. It's never a good idea to fly into minus one or even plus one, anything under 10 degrees when there's precipitation, when there's any moisture in the air, or they have those anti-ice uh, switches on. We all know that it is simulated, even though we can't see it, and the last thing you want to do is drop out of the sky.
the runway here is only 2,429 meters and uh, therefore I'm going to just use auto break 2 I don't want to end up in the gravel on the other side so <coughs> also going to try a little bit harder than usual just to stay in the box when we actually land um, try not to float this time Uh, yeah, this might not be a hundred and sixty foot per minute landing. Uh, I mean, the real world, <coughs> we uh, don't care about the uh, foot per minute landing like the flight simmers do. So you need to get it in the box, or you do a go around. And I really don't want to do a go around now. I've got other plans. So yeah, uh, we need to be under five hundred foot per minute so that the VA will accept the landing. But uh, we have to do what we have to do. <laughs> it won't be that bad, it won't be that bad, I'm going to do my best, don't worry. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know, I've just seen the videos. I'll try and be nice today. the airport now below us How's it go?
I'm impressed the aircraft seems to be holding that uh, turn quite well if you look at the chart there it's on the line eh? quite nice Light slope, waiting for the localizer. Get the wheel lock going there so we don't overshoot. <coughs> we'll go for a quick uh, flaps 15 gear down straight after we get on that localizer and slow down and do the best landing we can. Localizers active, glide slopes active, and approach phase on. Nice. So just for fun, let's uh, have a go at this heads up display, let's see if we can actually use it. Look at the wind, 22 knots, wow. I'm sitting talking and I'm not doing what I said I must do. Gear down, flaps 15. Uh, let's get our speed 151. Alright. Uh, spoilers are armed. RTO. The brakes do almost at landing flaps. Gear is down three grid. and our landing elevation is 359 foot on on the ground here. What is our go around? Go around is 2000. Wow, okay. We'll leave it at 3000 then. Very bumpy. Five hundred. Right, uh, it's a bit off the center there, so I have to intervene Four and hundred. I've taken it by hand. Let's see. Approaching minimums. Three hundred. Minimums. Two hundred. Come on, come on. 30. 202 foot per minute. That's not too bad. But I had a bit of a sinking feeling there at one stage. Wow, that was a bit rough.
Sentinel, I didn't have much turbulence there this morning, so you might be lucky. You might miss the potholes today. Approaching zero four. Thank you. My heart sank into my uh, throat there at one point when um, I noticed I was going a little bit too low, but I'm um, you know, happy, happy with the outcome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ah, now I see I have the same problem here. This uh, wiper is not cleaning. Let's have a look, see if we can fix that. If that is something we can fix. Can't remember where it was. Visual, yes, visual. There we go. That looks better. Right, well, guys, welcome uh, to whatever this airport is called. <laughs> Let's get that name again. <laughs> Beauvais. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Sentinel, uh, just practice. <laughs> I don't do it this well every time, and, and sometimes it's hairy, but uh, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. Come now, turn the other way. Right, so let us see what this parking situation looks like. No sir, wrong one. That is the right one. So we're going to go straight then turn left and find a parking. Okay. So thank you. We'll see you on the next one. I am going to try and fly tonight again. Um, I, I was thinking in the week, you know, the US guys miss out on my flights because of the time differences. So this is specifically the, the morning one is for the European kind of audience and maybe, you know, more east. But what I'll do is I'll try and fit in a stream later on in the evening on a Saturday just to get the US guys to watch me fly the plane as well so if you can make it that'll be cool and if I can make it that'll be also cool poor guy we're blinding him let's not do that It breaks on. Before we do this, let's just have a quick look around. So this is the new scenery I got from the Orc. Uh, I'll go check on the links that you guys posted if it's the same or if it's different or what. Matho, um, you do get a better image quality. That's undeniably uh, so. It is so, but. Um, I don't have time to go and sit and edit and fiddle with it afterwards so much as I, I would like to. So my my best bet at this point in time is just to stream. Uh, the videos will still come. I'm not stopping that, but uh, I need uh, more time to do videos. Bye bye. Even those flags are turning. This is very nice. Very nice. Right, so in order for us to log this flight, I now need to switch off my engines, log the flight and then I want to quickly take this uh, aircraft for a replay or two or three. Oh, that's very clever, very, very clever.
I never put the IP on the bus. Right, engine one, two, off, and let's file this pirip. Right, pirip has been filed, and then we can go replay. Bit of a crab there, eh? And that's when my heart sank and I realized, oh, you gotta catch this bird now. Just taking some nice green shots here. Wow. Any other views you guys would like to have a look at? How about the double view?
Well, that's it for me. Um, guys, thank you for joining me. It's awesome to have you guys here and to spend a Saturday morning with you, uh, speaking South African local time. So, um, I'll try to see you guys later this evening. Uh, as I said earlier, just to try to get some US involvement into the streams. Uh, if everything goes well. Otherwise, next week, same time, same place. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy your week. Send me your messages uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can contact me via Facebook as well. Uh, the link is in the description as well. So, um, yeah, enjoy it and uh, come back soon. We'll, we'll talk again. Bye-bye. Bye Sentinel. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.